What's good, y'all? What's the numbers TV? It's your boy, Paul Rowe. Make sure you subscribe to the channel if you're not subscribed already. And like a video if you appreciate the content that Paul Rowe and What's the Numbers is I providing. Today we back with a profile piece. This one is on Ziggy Za. As you seen in the beginning of the video, that was some footage from the Smack DVD, which is the first time I seen who Ziggy Za was. Smack was, you know, if you in tune with the Smack DVDs, like I said, it was DVDs from the early 2000s, mid 2000s that was going to some of the worst neighborhoods in New York City and get footage with rappers, with dancers, with singers, with managers, with beat makers, different street hustlers, different things like that. And that's what the situation with, 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 with Ziggy Za. So he, they was out there in Brownville filming some rapper and Ziggy was just on the scene. He was out there, he was like hyping up, he was very animated, very energetic and the camera kept making his way to Ziggy. So that's how you seen his footage, you know what I'm saying? They kept going back to me. He was basically spitting what he's talking his talk and that's how he got that part as far as like making the DVD. They ain't cut his parts out, they let this part in and it was a big part as far as like, damn, who that kid? He got all this jewelry on doing, you know what I'm saying? He looked young and that's how people started knowing who Ziggy Zai was. Now, right after that, he has began a part in a movie, Brooklyn's Finest. One of his friends brought him for an audition. He got the audition and got the part. And he filmed in that video in the summer of 2008. Now, footage, um, the filming is wrapped. And you know how it takes the whole editing time for the movie to get, you know, finished and edited and sent to different festivals and all that before the, the general release. So as he's waiting for that to come out, you know what I'm saying, in between, they say, three months after this, the filming was wrapped, they say he went and killed, went on a drill, basically, a revenge killing for a guy that had killed one of his friends by the name. The guy was Nathaniel Garcia, aka 50. They said 50 killed one of Ziggy Zod's friends, and Ziggy Zod and Robert Crawford went to kill, to find him and kill him as, as retaliation, revenge. So the story goes that they knew that 50 had caught in Brooklyn, and they waited for him outside the courthouse and followed him a few blocks from the courthouse. So when they hopped out and they chased him into a beauty salon and shot him, they killed, they killed him and shot other people as far as they, as they were trying to kill him. So, they flee the scene and all that, but a few days later, a car gets found which was, that was linked to the shooting, and they, when, they, when, they, when they trace it back to the driver and the registered owner of the car, a guy by the name of Paul Went, 20 years old, he ends up telling everything. He's 20 years old, he ain't trying to go to jail for something that he ain't do as far as like he wasn't a shooter, he was just a driver. He tells on who the two shooters was, which was Robert Prophet and Zaire Page, according to him. Now, they lock them both up, and you know how it takes, it takes a little while for the trial to start. So in between that time, Brooklyn's Finest comes out. Now, it's out as far as like, you know, on the general release, big screen and all that. And then a few months later, towards the end of 2010, early 2011, Ziggy Zah and Robert Crawford go to trial. Now they both blow trial. Robert Crawford gets 53 years for his part in the shooting. And now Ziggy Zah is turning his sentence. Now him and the judge was having back and forth his whole trial as far as like banning Ziggy from the courtroom for outbursts while witnesses were testimony, while witness testimony was going on. So when it's his turn to talk, he basically throws the frank at the judge, let the judge know that he don't care what he gives him because he's going to appeal the situation. They, this is a, a, a dirty trial and he ain't get a fair shake. So the judge takes all that consideration and basically sends it to, to 100 and something years, 170 years, 103 years, something like that. And basically puts his lights out, you know what I mean? As far as like from a jail, as far as you're going to be in jail for the rest of, your, rest of your life, basically tries to put his lights out. So now the whole jail thing starts for with Ziggy. You know what I'm saying? You start seeing pictures of him up north. You know what I'm saying? They saying he's not going to have a, a smooth beard because he killed the blood. So even if some bloods respect him and don't want to do nothing to him, you always going to have some bloods that do want to do something to him. So he's always in, into something. They say he had, was in a riot in Rikers Island. They say he's in a box up north getting into a police. So you see different pictures of him up north. You don't really hear too much, but you do hear different things as far as like he got a phone call on Product DVD. That's the only other place you can find some Ziggy Za footage from before he was in jail and after, besides that Smack DVD, is Product DVD. So if you want to find any footage or any info on Ziggy, you can go to type in Smack DVD Ziggy Za or Product DVD Ziggy Za and you're going to see that. But other than that footage, you really ain't hear nothing from him. Until last year, October 2018, he did an article in a magazine, OTH Magazine. You guys could check that out. You guys could still buy it online. It's still available for like 14 bucks or something. We got a big article in there where he's telling his side of the story. And as far as like 50 and what they saying he did as far as killing 50, the appeal process he's trying to do, his bid up north, different things like that. 
So that's where he's at right now. So I just you know at the end of the day, I'm gonna check as far as like find out where he's locked up at. You know what I'm saying? As if he, if he, oh, one more thing. He did appeal. He did appeal his conviction in 2015. That's the last time I found an appeal as far as that he published that he um filed. And it was denied, you know what I'm saying? So maybe there is some more appeals going in after. But his last appeal that was on record in 2015 was denied. Now, I looked him up as far as the inmate locator to see if I could find him to see where he's at, if he still got all that time, if he gave me that time back yet. And that's I did find him. He is locked up currently in Sullivan, upstate New York. And um, he still got all that time on his head. So, you know what I'm saying? This is a quick video for Ziggy Zai, one of the big crips in New York City. You know what I'm saying? I went to jail for, you know what I'm saying, a drill. Basically living the life, you know what I'm saying? And not too many people do too many. Um, I'm not glorifying or praising nothing, but with all the blood history and all the, everybody's so infatuated with the bloods and how they put on. and You know what I'm saying? This is a little something different. This is one of the crips that in New York City, out of Brooklyn, got put on in the town and also still holding his own in jail from everything that I'm hearing. So this is what it is, man. It's What's the Number of TV? You know how we do with our profile pieces. We like touching on different people that people forgot about or people not really in tune with. That's what we do over here, man. It's Polro. It's What's the Numbers TV. I'll be back before you know it. I'm out of here. Peace.